everybody welcome back to letters from Jen I'm so excited about this program now as you know we've been on a series uh, that is all about the battle of the mind understanding that we have a real enemy who is out to destroy us and the way that he does that is he penetrates our thought life with lies or anything that is contrary to the truth of God's Word and he also looks for a foothold where he can come in and get legal rights to cause trouble in our lives any offense or any way that we have uh, kind of violated a spiritual law in the past is a reason or a kind of gives him room to come in and torment us in that area but when we submit to Jesus we can stand up against the devil and resist him in a plea pre-planned attack against him let's go find out more about this from the Word of God <music> our previous discussion concerning the battle of the mind with God's strategy on how to stand up to the devil and push him out of our lives. We saw how James 4 verse 7 says, so be subject to God, resist the devil, stand firm against him and he will flee from you. Now I told you that the meaning of the word submit and how it means to agree with uh, and surrender to and acknowledge higher authority. In fact, one translation says it means to hide behind someone's back, showing that there is protection in submission. Now, this brought us to understand that being completely surrendered to the protection and safety of the Lord in our intimate relationship with Him is the position from which we resist the devil. Remember I said that the word resist actually means to stand against. It's a military term that suggests a pre-planned resistance or a well thought out strategy that we can use to cause the devil or rather catch the devil out and rather keep him out of our lives. Let's see what 1 Peter 5 verse 9 says. Withstand him the devil, be firm in faith against his onslaught, rooted, established, strong, immovable and determined knowing that the same sufferings that we have are also appointed to the whole body of Christians throughout the world. In other words, the devil is out there not just to take you out, but to take out every Christian. Why? Because that is his nature. So don't feel sorry for yourself if you feel like you're under attack. Don't feel like you're the only person who is suffering. No, <laughs> you, we all have a common enemy who is always on the lookout to devour those who are in Christ Jesus. So remember, we suffer together in that we have a common enemy together, but there is a pre-planned resistance and it's time for us to find out more about that. You see, we have victory in Jesus. While we're on this earth, even though there is an enemy, we still have victory. And this is how we live in it. We learn to resist the devil. And to do that, we must become steadfast, rooted, established, determined, and immovable in faith. In other words, we have to reinforce ourselves in faith. Now, we know that faith comes from hearing and meditating and studying the Word of God. But it can't be a mechanical process. We have to be connected in the Spirit of God to the truth of His Word. Now, as I've mentioned before, in this series, we must embrace God's truth with our entire soul. We don't just agree in our thoughts. We also have to have our emotions and our will completely sold out to it too. We receive God's Word into our lives. Why? Because we love Him. Now, the Word must become an intricate part of our lives lifestyle, not an added program or an afterthought. You see, giving ourselves completely to the Word as our vital necessity through the Holy Spirit leading and teaching and making it alive and real to us. This is how we establish ourselves in the Word to withstand and resist the devil. Now, this is also how we not only kick him out of our face, but we construct a solid, impenetrable wall of defense around our minds in order to keep him out. 
So as you know, we have learned how to submit to God by being in His presence. We understand also we have to establish ourselves in the Word, in the faith. And then when we know what is in the Word, any thought that the enemy puts into our minds that's contrary to it is going to stand out like a sore thumb. It's like a loud sound of alarms that go off inside of us because incorrect thoughts will be so foreign to the truth that we have been meditating on and settling in our minds. Now this is the very moment that the devil is caught out, right there, because we instantly recognize the origin of those incorrect thoughts and we know the devil's purpose. So we take that thought captive, we tell the devil we know it's a lie, and since it's violating God's word, it has nothing to do with us, no place in our lives. And then we rejoice as we take that thought and we cast it right out of our lives. Now we outright declare that in the name of Jesus, we will not accept that lie into our lives. We immediately replace that stinking lie with the truth of God's word. So in other words, if the devil knows that you've been vulnerable in the past in the area of condemnation, like I discussed, then he'll keep trying to penetrate your life through thoughts of low self-worth or guilt. But since you've decided to submit yourself to God and you are establishing yourself in the word continuously, you'll recognize that that's a lie. And the Holy Spirit will remind you of what God's word says about that because you've been spending time in the word with him. And so as soon as you understand, hang on a second, I have been spending time in the word of God. I know who I am in Christ Jesus. I understand that there is no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. And any thought then of unworthiness, any thought of guilt or shame after we've repented, after you've laid that thing down at the cross, any thought that comes in your mind from, you know, after that, you're going to recognize immediately. It's time to get mad at the devil at that point. It's time to call him out. You take a hold of that thought and you throw it right back in his face. And you say, no devil, in the name of Jesus, this thought is not my thought. It's yours. Take it back. And you throw it right back at him. You say, I refuse. I resist this thought. I refuse for it to be a part of my life. And in Jesus' name, I replace it with God's thoughts. And then you do. You take that scripture in Romans that says, There is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus and are walking according to the Spirit. That's who I am. And that's why I will not by any way be caught up in feeling of guilt or condemnation. That's what the Holy Spirit does. He actually reminds you of the verse that you have been meditating on. Remember what I told you, Romans 8 verse 1, therefore there is no condemnation, no feeling guilty of your wrong for those who are in Christ Jesus, who live and walk not after the dictates of the flesh, but after the dictates of the Holy Spirit. Now let me tell you, by this time, the devil will not only be completely defenseless against you, he'll be shaken in terror. And you know why? Because he is a lawbreaker. And he has been caught red-handed. The Bible says that when we resist him like this, he doesn't just shrug his shoulders and slowly turn around and kind of look the other way. No, it says that he flees from us. Now that word flee means to run like one who is fearful of prosecution. Like a lawbreaker who is caught and fears punishment. He runs because he knows if he sticks around a moment longer, the blood-bought, fearless child of God who is submitted to God and established to his word will do more damage to him and his kingdom than he ever bargained for. So he's not going to remain there. He's going to run for his life. And that is how we resist the devil. That's how we kick him out and keep him out of our lives. Now next week, I want to begin sharing some wonderful practical steps of how to build a secure wall of defense around your mind to constantly protect it from any attack from the enemy. So until then, submit yourself to the Lord. Give yourself to studying his word of truth and make the devil regret ever thinking about messing with your mind. Goodbye and God bless you. Music